President Trump has ordered the Pentagon to pull all U.S. troops out of Syria. Earlier, he tweeted, quote, we have defeated ISIS in Syria. My only reason for being there during the Trump presidency. The White House has asked the Pentagon to start planning the immediate withdrawal of American forces from the region. This includes 2,000 U.S. soldiers. So CBS News national security correspondent David Martin is joining us now from the Pentagon. So this is just sort of breaking today, David. What is the latest on this? What are you hearing from your sources there? Well, the decision uh, to pull all U.S. troops out of Syria was uh, made yesterday and, and uh, given to uh, the military to start executing overnight. And, uh, of course, it will take them some time to come up with a plan and, and, and uh, then execute a withdrawal, but there are not a lot of forces in there, 2,000, so it, it uh, shouldn't uh, take too long. Um, now, uh, the president's tweet said, uh, we have defeated ISIS in Syria. Uh, I'm not sure uh, everybody in the Pentagon would agree with that. Uh, I'm sure the military would not agree with that. For one thing, uh, although the uh, U.S. with its uh, allies in Syria, the Syrian Democratic Forces, have taken back virtually all of the uh, land that ISIS seized uh, in Syria at the end of the uh, uh, Obama administration. There are still a few pockets of ISIS holdouts uh, along the uh, Euphrates River Valley down close to uh, the border with Iraq. So the, the remnants of the caliphate uh, that uh, President Trump had vowed to uh, annihilate still exist. But more importantly, the uh, Pentagon has talked uh, for over a year now of achieving the quote-unquote lasting defeat of ISIS. And that means not only taking back all of the uh, territory that ISIS seized, but also creating conditions in Syria which would not permit them uh, to reemerge after U.S. troops left. And that principally consisted of training between 40 and 50,000 local security forces who would then uh, govern these, uh, these areas that had been liberated from ISIS, but which were badly destroyed in the fighting and in need of uh, vast recovery efforts. Um, now, if that, that training effort is only about 20 percent complete, so the conditions for the lasting defeat of ISIS are still uh, uh, quite some way away. Uh, <clears throat> so I think some people will see this as uh, snatching, uh, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory, uh, claiming victory uh, prematurely. However, the other side of the argument is that Syria was becoming an increasingly uh, complicated battlefield and was looking more and more like an open-ended U.S. military commitment. In fact, not too long ago, just within the past couple of weeks, the National Security Advisor, John Bolton, said U.S. troops will remain in Syria as long as there are Iranian-backed forces in Syria. That could last forever. Mm. Uh, and so the, the U.S. had seemed to be creeping into this open-ended role in Syria, which was becoming more complicated because now uh, Turkey is talking about uh, moving its troops into Syria uh, to go after some of the same uh, Kurdish forces that are being supported by U.S. troops. And so it was the, the, the specter of a clash between uh, Turkish forces and, and U.S. forces, two NATO allies, was also starting to loom on the horizon. Syria is a mess. And it, it may be uh, that uh, President Trump simply decided uh, that the only thing to do was to, to declare victory and get out. But uh, I am sure that there will be many accusations that the U.S. has abandoned its uh, Kurdish allies in Syria. In fact, uh, that, that's what's happening right now. You know, we've been uh, watching sort of Twitter and Lindsey Graham, who is at times a supporter of the president, is tweeting out, with all due respect, ISIS is not defeated in Syria, Iraq, and after just returning from visiting there, certainly not Afghanistan. However, withdrawal of our forces in Syria might 
might is rather mightly uh, undercuts the effort and puts our allies, the Kurds, at risk. My, my question for you is, you know, the president was really pushing for an immediate withdrawal, I think, in the spring. And it seemed mm -hmm. like his advisors had convinced him to back away from that. What has changed since then? Well, what's, what's changed is there has been undeniable progress on the battlefield. Uh, they continue to, to chip away at these ISIS strongholds. There are, are just like 20 or 30 kilometers left of ISIS-held territory in the Euphrates River Valley in Syria, and they're chipping away at it at the rate of about a, a kilometer a day. So mm. if you do the math, there's about a month or two left of fighting before the caliphate is is eliminated and then you get on to the other uh, business of creating conditions so that isis could not return but while that that steady progress has been made there are all these signs that this is becoming an open-ended mission mm. the the uh, statement by John Bolton that U.S. troops would remain there as long as uh, Iranian-backed forces are there, statements that U.S. troops would remain there until there is a political settlement in Syria, which is nowhere on the horizon. Um, the, the presence of U.S. troops there uh, was going to continue to be a very, very complicated situation. And I, it, it just looks, I don't know uh, President Trump's thinking, it looks like he decided, look, if we just declare victory and go home, we don't have to worry about, uh, or at least we don't get caught up in all of these events that are still unfolding in Syria. David, what about other forms of support? You know, you talked about Iraq. There are troops in the region that could sort of spring into action at any point. There's missile strikes. or Are there other ways yep. that the U.S. military could, military could continue to support the Kurds without actually having troops on the ground? Well, <clears throat> right now, there are artillery batteries on the Iraqi side of the border shelling ISIS positions in Syria. That's how close to the Iraqi border uh, this fighting is. So uh, those those artillery batteries aren't aren't going to go away. And of course, the U.S. Uh, has has been flying air stri strikes into uh, Syria. However, those air strikes and those artillery strikes are called in with the help of American special operations forces who have the technology, who have the intelligence to be able to pinpoint those strikes to make uh, the, the uh, danger of uh, killing civilians at least as, as uh, limited as, as possible. Now, if, if all of those uh, troops are pulled out, the people who call in the airstrikes, uh, then it's hard to see how the airstrikes can remain um, to be as effective. Now, there is also the possibility that you could pull out American troops and just use the CIA in, a, in an undeclared uh, operation that supports the uh, Syrian Democratic Forces. And I think these are, these are matters that are all uh, being discussed right now. Um, this, is, this is a very new decision, and exactly how it's going to be implemented has not been worked out. Uh, one last thing on one last tweet from Lindsey Graham, who moments ago wrote, a decision to withdraw will also be viewed as a boost to ISIS desire to come back. Uh, to your point about how few kilometers of territory they still hold, is that a realistic fear or, or are we talking about remnants that uh, do not raise to that level of concern? No, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a legitimate fear. I mean, f for uh, some time, uh, ISIS has been uh, switching to uh, guerrilla warfare, where you, you, you melt into the population. You don't try to uh, fight as an organized military force. So although there are these uh, hardcore foreign fighters that are holding on to these uh, strongholds, uh, much of the uh, ISIS uh, manpower has already sort of melted into the uh, Syrian countryside. Uh, their leader, uh, al-Baghdadi is, uh, as far as we know, still alive. 
um, and perhaps able to, to rally them. Uh, so it, it looks very much like the situation that occurred at, at when the U.S. pulled out of Iraq and left behind conditions which allowed ISIS to come flowing back both into Iraq and Syria. So nobody, at least in the military, would tell you uh, that a lasting defeat of, of ISIS, uh, A, has been accomplished, or B, is even imminent. There is a lot of work that the U.S. military sees has to be done before you can claim to have defeated ISIS. Okay, and we've learned the announcement of a decision and the execution of that decision can be two different things in this White House. So a lot more details to follow through on. David Martin, thanks so much for reporting at the Pentagon. Sure thing.